Okay, now we are going to we are going to penetrate into a system. Another word for it is to use the word hack, but then I don't want to use the word hack. Let me use the word um, penetrate. So we are going to penetrate into a system. Now we are going to use this concept. There's a concept called reverse shell. Now, please, it's very good you understand um, basic concepts like this because they will actually help you in the usage of some of some tools. Yeah. Now, if you know how to use your command, you know how to use your command very well. If you know how to use your command very well, there are some tools that are call CLI tools. When you load them up, you actually know how to use them. That's the instruction or the information will be provided to you already. Now, let's assume you have um, you have let's 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 explain uh, reverse shell in this uh, manner. Let's say we can say reverse shell is like a type of remote shell where um, the target machine, that's like the victim or the person you want to hack, the person you want to, yes, let me use the word hack. The person you want to hack, yeah. The person now connects back to the, what, the attacker's machine, that's you. Maybe not you, I don't want to put you as the attacker anyways, you're a cybersecurity engineer, you're not actually like the hacker. I'm not saying that with full certainty, it's 100% certainty anyways, but I'm just trying to tell you that our job here, or the job of the cybersecurity engineer, analyst, or pen test, or whatever it is, is to what, secure systems. Yeah. Now, sometimes we actually, uh, we actually replicate or do these activities, which activities, like hacking activities, why? To show that this particular vulnerability exists or something like this can be done. We are kind of like trying to sh to, to say what or show how these guys operate as the malicious guys, how they operate, how they work. Now, now a reverse shell basically is um, just like I said, is like a type of remote shell whereby the victim connects back to us. Now, this time around, we are the attacker. So we are actually behaving like an attacker. So, by allowing us, that's we the attacker, to gain remote control over the target system. You get it. It's in contrast to like the traditional shell where the attacker would typically initiate the connection to the victim's machine. Yeah. So, how does it work? First of all, there's always like an initial compromise. Then, uh, okay, what do I mean by initial compromise? Well, the reason is asking me to explain again. I'm trying to explain what reverse shell is because basically the practical, this practical session, you are, you are going to see, actually the essence of this practical session is to show you how I'm going to use CLI to do some things. But at the same time, you need to know that the technique I'm using is via a reverse shell. So I'm trying to explain what a reverse shell is. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, it's a type of remote shell whereby the target machine it's a type of remote shell whereby the target machine, or you can see the victim's machine, connects back to the attacker's machine, thereby allowing the attacker to gain remote control over the target system. Let's say me now, I want to hack Jimmy. There's someone here bearing Jimmy. Now, I am the attacker. Jimmy is the um, victim, right? Jimmy is the victim. Now, ordinarily, I should just connect to our street. But reverse shell from the word reverse is a situation whereby um, Jimmy's machine, when I mean machine, I mean a laptop or a PC or a, a computer. Jimmy's machine, Jimmy's PC would what? Would connect back to me. That's from the, that concept of reverse. Anyways, uh, enough of the theory. Just get the, this thing that a machine is connecting back to my own machine. That one will now give me what remote control or give me remote control over the this thing. So right about now, this you know Kali now, this Kali is my machine. This Kali is my machine. What you're seeing on the screen currently is my machine. Is that me, the attacker? I am the one attacking, right? So whatever I see you're gonna see will be seen here. Yeah. Now, this take a look at my windows. I'll share my screen, you'll see my windows now. Now, you know, Kali, I'm sure we all know the installation process, the way we all the way we installed it. So take a look at my windows. Now, this is my what you can see on the screen now is my windows, right? 
it means they are like two different computers. So have that assumption that there are two different computers. Let's take it to another place. Not what you're seeing currently. So let's take it to I'm sure you are familiar with this, what you can see currently on the screen, which like what we did yesterday, uh, very more, so we're trying to solve all those questions. Now, this is like Windows 1. This Windows is actually the what, um, is the victim, right? Now, the Kali is, just assume that there are two different pieces, two different computers in different, different places in the world. Do you get different places in the world? Now, um, so the idea now is that this Windows machine, this Windows machine that you're seeing right here, this Windows machine will connect back to that Kali. What does that, what does that have to tell you? As, as, as it connects back to the Kali, automatically that Kali will now gain remote control over this Windows PC. You should be able to see um, stuffs that are here. All right, so now having the Explain that one. Um, there may not really be need to explain. Okay, let me just explain, like in a nutshell, how it works, how a reverse shell works, so that you will know what I am doing when I start doing what I'm doing. Or do, like I said, the essence of the practical session is to show you that um, CLI can actually be can actually be very very much utilized in instance <clears throat> in instances like this. So how do we do it? First of all, there should be <coughs> one minute. Okay, I'm back. So first of all, there should be like an initial compromise. There should be an initial compromise. That is um, any anyhow anyhow you want to compromise the system. If you want to use phishing. If you want to use um, any software. If you want to host it on the net. If you want anyhow you want to do it, fine. There should be just an initial compromise. That's how you are going to get the file to the person. If you set up a listener, you will see what I'm going to do. A listener is like someone that is listening now. Definitely is going to be on the. Um, on the attacker side, you set up the listener, then you set up the reverse connection, then you gain control, then you gain control. Now, why do we use a reverse shell? Can someone? Okay, you don't. I don't want to really waste too much time. The reason why we use a reverse shell, why don't we just connect to it? Actually, one very key reason is to bypass is to bypass um, firewalls. Yeah. If you notice, many networks actually have firewalls that block incoming connection, thereby making it difficult for an attacker to directly connect to a machine. Yeah. So you should know that outbound connections are allowed. Yeah. And it's, it's, it makes this thing reverse shell very, very possible. Another one is if you want to, if you want to, um, how do I put it? Like for evasion. Like you don't want to be caught, you don't want to be seen. Now, because the victim actually initiates the connection, reverse shells can actually bypass certain security controls. Yes, or let me say monitoring tools that look for they look out for unauthorized um, incoming connections. So if you want to for evasion, basically you can actually use reverse shell. Okay, good enough of the talking. Let's jump straight to the Let's see how it's been done. Now, remember what I said now. This is my Kali. I'm actually going to, like, attack my window. So, assume the window is somewhere in the world, somewhere in one deep forest or probably in New York. So, I'll attack my windows. How? Use reverse shell. 